Hi everyone, let's continue G power sample size calculation. I had already given you in previous video how you have to download G power and after that installation and introduction I had already covered in my previous video. And definitely I am going to give you link of that video in my description box. So let's continue in this uh, because we had already covered introduction and installation part. And today we will understand what is the relationship between effect size, sample size, alpha, beta, each and everything we will understand. And after that, we are going to calculate sample size with the help of G Power software. So first, let me give you one important thing. G Power, first, I would like to give you this introduction. G Power is a tool to compute statistical power analysis for many different T tests, F test, chi square test, Z test, and some exact tests. I will give you introduction. And G Power can also be used to compute effect size and to display graphically the results of power analysis. Power analysis, I will show you graphically. And this was the G Power software installation that was the I will give you this link also in my description box in today's video first you have to download and manual also you can go through this manual of this manual is available on this site after that we come to this G power this one is the First, we understand what is alpha. Alpha is level of confidence that is 95%. We are doing uh, at this 95% calculation. And alpha level of significance 0 0.05 at this level of confidence. Beta is 0.2 power of test 1 minus beta. 80%. It's generally accepted. Minimum level of power is 0 0.80 by Cohen 1988. This is the uh, standardized values. Those we will use in G power calculation. Then we come to the alpha, alpha risk, which measure the probability that a null hypothesis rejected when it is actually true, right? What is alpha risk? When we talk about beta risk, when we talk about beta risk, then we can say beta risk represent the probability, right? Beta risk represent the probability that a false hypothesis in a statistical test is accepted as true. I had already shared with you. And uh, tails refers to, uh, to start and end point of distribution. Two tailed always better. And desired effect size, it should be in between minimum 0.2 or 0.5. Why it is, I will tell you uh, uh, after this. And type 1, type 2 error, if you talk about, I had already explained to you, null hypothesis when it is true and when it is accepted, right? When it is accepted, right? Then it is the level of confidence 1 minus alpha. And when the null hypothesis is true, but it is rejected, then it is type 1 error that we are calling it alpha error and uh, null hypothesis when it is false but we still we are accepting that is type 2 error and then we are calling it beta error and power of test means 1 minus beta when fa false hypothesis but we are rejecting that is a correct decision both these are correct decisions level this one is the when we are accepting null hypothesis when it is true and null hypothesis when it is false when we are rejecting that is known as power of test so we will talk about all these things. Next, we come to the relationship. We will check all these relationships in our GPAR software. When we are increasing alpha, increase power of test. When the alpha will increase, power of test would also increase. What could be the relationship between sample size and power of test? They are directly proportional to each other. They are directly proportional to each other. And if it is, is directly proportional to power of test, power of test means we talk about power of test means we are talking about 1 minus beta. So effect size is directly proportional to power of test. If effect size is increasing, power of test is also increasing. 
and effect size is inversely proportional to sample size. Effect size, when we are increasing effect size, right, that power of uh, sample size would be decreasing. And when we are increasing sample size, power effect size would be decreasing. And effect size is a number measuring the strength of the relationship between two variables in a population. As I had, I will give you link of this effect size video in my description box. Increasing the sample size can reduce the beta risk and that's true when we are going to increase our sample size this beta risk would be reduced beta risk means what beta risk means this one is the type 2 error when null hypothesis is false still we are accepting and that is the more dangerous as comparatively to the type 1 error so let's begin this curve i had called already copied from my g bar calculation so now Let's begin this part. When we have down, when we had downloaded, right? So now I am just, uh, I'm just uh, um, putting our value. Let's say I want. Let's say uh, once again I should start rather than at fresh. I will start just a moment. This is the G part, right? Now, now I think that would be there would be clarity to you. Right, so what we have to do, let me take, <laughs> now you can see here, this is the t-test, right? I want to, these are the, all those things, f-test, t-test, chi-square test, and let test. Suppose we talk about f-test, so you can see what are the possibilities, ANCOVA, fixed effect, main effect, and interactions, ANOVA, fixed effect, right? one way ANOVA there's, there's so many hot links right and as well as ANOVA and uh, linear multiple regression variance generic test everything is here right so first let me give you because we will discuss later on about this t-test let's say I want to apply t-test and for let's say means difference between two independent means two independent means i had already explained you in my playlist research pathology playlist i had already given you independent t-test dependent t-test and one sample t-test so when we talk about two independent means two independent means there are two entirely different groups and we want to check we are comparing their means so ultimately what would happen let's say what is effect size let me, yes, you can see here, effect size conventions. When we will click here, effect size convention, you can see here, B equal to 0 0.20, that means it's small. Cohen's D, 0 0.50, that means it's medium, and 0 0.80, that means it's large. So we usually prefer to work effect size should be 0.2 to 0.5 right not on 0 0.80 that is not advisable and if we talk about alpha it is 0 0.0 0 0.05 right and power is 0 0.95 but standard is 0 0.8 so i will give you example of both when we are calculating at this part and when we are calculating on this part Mm, little bit we can increase this size right and uh, correct now i think it's visible so what i have to do t test right i want to check this one is the means difference between two independent variables and i will choose why I had choose, chosen this one is the a priori compute required sample size given alpha power and effect size. Because before starting any research, I want to know what should be my sample size. But if we will choose this one, post hoc. Post hoc means somebody said, let's say, uh, somebody had asked you, please find out what is your uh, this one is the what is your uh, power right and you if you would like to check this thing so already you have taken that sample then you have to 
calculate but i am choosing this one before starting and that is this question has been raised by my one of the research scholar she was asking me ma'am please kindly guide us advise us how we have to calculate our what should be correct sample size so this video only i had prepared for those research scholars those these people are starting their research and they want to know what should be our sample size but before that you should aware because you understand uh, on the basis of your objectives what should be what test you are going to apply right so there are a number of the tests whether you are going to apply z test t test right it depends upon this and then accordingly you have to calculate your uh, this one is the sample size um, now what i am doing let's say this one is the i am not doing this thing mm, i would like to prioritize right so 0.5 right i i had already shown you d 0.2 small 0.5 medium and 0.8 large alpha value is 0.5 right that means level of confidence is 95% power is 1 minus beta right 0.95 but it's not standard as per cohen 0.8 is standard but first we will calculate at this part and allocation ratio means both the sub both the because we are doing independent test independent t test so that that means both these samples are equal right and n2 divided by n1 is equal right so what i have to do now let me i will right what i have to do now i would like to calculate a moment i would calculate you can see here this is the this is my sample size total sample size 176 required when the effect size is 0.5 alpha value is 0.5 right 0.05 and par is 0.95 and allocation and you can see here sample size group 1 is 88 that is equal right and actual power is 0.95 right so this sample size is required ab let's say again i am increasing my this window now you can see here let me moment let me you can see here when i am going to change this value effect size let's say i want small so i'm going to change that is 0.2 and alpha value is same and par is before that okay fine once again we will run calculate right so now you can see sample size is increased 1084 because effect size we had reduced right so in both the groups we require 540 to 500 i mean this one is the sample size is 542 and 542 so total sample size is 1084 and actual power is this ab now let's say effect size is same but power is 1 minus beta we would like to take standard one so 0.8 and allocation ratio is same now i want to calculate this part right you can see here right this is my curve and you can see here total sample size we required 620 and sample size in one group 310 and sample size in group 2 310 because both are equal right now let's say and actual power is 0.8 let's say i am taking two sample size one is male another one is female so n2 let's say this one is the uh i am talking about female and this one is the male so let's say i am giving the value is 2 that means n2 is twice of this n1 that means this value is just double to n1 matlab means females are more as comparatively to male so now what i have to do you can see here, i would like to calculate so you can see here 233 are in the group 1 right and 465 in group 2 that means this is the number of the female this one is the number of the male and total sample size we require 698.80 ab now what we have to do let's say we are we want to check at the medium 
affects size. So what would happen? Again, I would press calculate. So you can see here total sample size is reduced because sample size D value you had taken at the medium level 0.5 rather than 0.2. So now what I have to do, let's say here is 0.2 and I will give this value 0 0.9, 0 0.9, right, 0 0.95 and now again I want to calculate. So you can see total sample size is increased 1, 2, 2, 0, 8, 1, 3, 4, 0, 7. This is by sample size. Um, now, what I want, let's say I'm reducing this, right, now what I want, I want let's say x, y plot for range of values. So simply I will click here, right? Again, I'm repeating the same process, x, y plot for range of values and I will draw this plot. So uh, beautifully, this plot is drawn here, right? And uh, you can see here total sample size and this is the power, one minus beta error probability. Right. So you can see a T test means difference between two independent means two groups, tails, one tail, allocation ratio, this and all. Uh, let's say because I usually because one tail rather than one tail, you always prefer two tail. Right. Again, I have to calculate. And this is the now you can see total sample size 1464 four, and both the sample size because I had chosen two. That means there is a difference in between both these groups, right? So this one is the 1464. Four. And again, now I am drawing this plot and this plot is simply and complete description is here. And simply what you can do, you can just click, right click, copy plot to clipboard. And now I want in my uh, dissertation, right? So what I have to do, I want, to paste it here. So this curve is, is I had pasted here. And simply what you have to do, I'm deleting this part, right? You can see here. And now I want what this is the, calc the this one is the plot. I want to copy this plot. I want to report in my dissertation. So simply what I have to do, I will paste copy and paste directly this curve and I can justify here. Correct. So I'm sure uh, you understand how we have to calculate sample size and um, one tail, two tail and as well as by varying this effect size right and power also one minus beta and after that we are going to calculate our what should, what is our correct sample size we should collect. So I'm sure this video would be helpful to you. And um, in the next video, I am going to explain some other tests. Those are already available in my, in this, in this G part, right? Like uh, there, there's so many things are available here, like test, you can see so many types of test, correlation, means, proportions, variance one group two group generic so i will discuss in the next video all these tests so keep watching i'm sure that video would be helpful thank you so much